Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Open Date Picker dialog. Now, even if you think you know what this thing is, I'm going to show you some cool tricks. For example, how to have that date picker automatically open when you tab to or click on a field. Today's question comes from Abby in Madeira, California, one of my Platinum members. Abby says, is there any way that I can have the date picker pop up automatically when a user tabs to or clicks on a field? It's not always evident to my users, some of whom seriously need training, that they can click on the date picker box. Well, first of all, Abby, if you need training, you have come to the right place. I've got lots of beginner lessons that you can put your people through. Um, the best way to learn how to use Access is to spend a little time building a little database. And even if you don't want them building your database or working on it, you know, if they learn a little bit of Access to build their own, maybe like a, you know, a, a, like I used to build a base, baseball card database when I was younger, uh, just something for fun. Teach them Access that way. One of the things I've been kicking around in my brain for the past couple of years is whether or not to build a course that's dedicated to teaching users how to work with Access databases to show them the different things like clicking on the date picker box or, you know, filtering, sorting, that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, anybody watching, if you're interested in that kind of a video for your users to get familiar with just using an access database, post a comment down below. Let me know about it. If enough people are interested, I'll definitely put something together. Okay, but now getting to the date picker boxes. If you don't know how to use date criteria in your queries, go watch this video. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. Go watch this so you understand how to make a query that pulls up records between two dates. That's the example we're going to use in today's class. So if you don't know how to do that, go watch that video and come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you'd like to. You'll find a link down below. And right here, I've got a today is date box, which we're going to use this for our date criteria, start date and end date. We're going to make two of these guys. Now I've got a contact table which has all the contacts in my database. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos, a customer obviously is a person, right? And a contact is anytime we talk to that customer, we track what we talked about, all right? Called for a job, called for interviews, he fought some Klingons and so on, okay? So that's what all these contacts are. So let's say we want to make a query that shows all the contacts in the system between two dates. Now you could use a parameter query like I showed you in the other date criteria video, or you could use a form that has a start date and end date field on it. And that's also one of the prerequisites of the other video I showed you. So let's make this guy the start date. Okay, I'll change the label. So it says start date. And we'll change the name of this text box instead of current date, we'll make this start date. Now I don't wanna have a control source equals date that puts today's date in there. But it's always that. If it's the control source, it's bound to that. You can't change it. However, what you can do is go to the data tab and give it a default value. A default value says, I'm going to start with this, but you can change it if you want to. Okay? So let's make this 2021-January uh, 1st. And yes, I use the ISO date standard, year, month, day. If you want to learn more about that, there's a video for you. Okay, so let's copy this guy, copy, paste, control C, control V, and we'll make the next one here the end date. So that'll be end date, and I'll change the box over here, go to all, and go up to the top here, and we'll change it from text 16 to end date. Everything's the same. Let's go back to data, and we'll change this to 2022. And yeah, there's all kinds of tricks you can do to put the current, you know, first day of last year in here, last day of first year, all that kind of stuff. I got videos for all that on my website. So now let's save this and I'll reopen the main menu. I got a little button here on my quick launch toolbar that does that. Just it's this guy down here. Okay. And there you go. You can see I got two dates in my start date and my end date. Now, if I click on one of these fields, nothing happens. Now, the first thing I want you to check is to make sure that the property for show date picker is set to on because you should see the little date picker thingy over here. It looks like a little calendar button. Go to design view. I'm going to select both of these. Go to format and find show date picker. Now mine is set to never. Now that could be what's confusing your users. They might not have the button available. If you upgraded from an older version of access, or if whoever built your database didn't set this property on, it normally does turn on for date values. 
Okay, but there are a lot of reasons why it might not be active. So change that setting, save it, close it, open it back up, click there, and there's the little date picker button. All right, so they may or may not have that on in their database. Okay, and one of my little frustrations, and I wish Microsoft would give you the option, is to have the little date picker appear over the text box. Because if you've got a continuous form, sometimes this shows up over the next field, which is kind of annoying. I think I posted it on their suggestions form, but I'm not sure. Okay, so next, a couple of keyboard shortcuts. If you don't know these already, if you press Control semicolon, it puts today's date in there, just like Excel. Okay, and if you post, post, if you press Control Shift semicolon or Control colon, it puts the time in there. Okay, and if you want those both together, it's Control colon space. That's Control semicolon space <laughs> Control Shift semicolon. There you go. You get both of them together. You can see it's all in the same field, but the field isn't wide enough. All right. A lot of people surprisingly don't know that trick. Okay. Now, here's another keyboard trick. When you're on a date field, if you press Alt down arrow, it opens up the date picker. If you don't want to have to stop to grab your mouse, and you can just use the arrow keys to move around and pick a date and then press enter. See? Shift tab to go to the previous one, Alt down arrow. Move around, pick the date you want, right? And then press enter. And there you go. All right, so that's alt down arrow. That's the same for a combo box, by the way. If you got a combo box on one of your forms, like this one up here, right? Alt down arrow opens that guy up. Okay, and then control F4 closes a form. Control F4 again. Alt F4 closes down all of access. Don't do that one. <laughs> I started doing a series on keyboard shortcuts for access, but very few people seem to watch those or comment on them, so I stopped doing them. If you guys want to see them, post some comments, let me know. I'm also working on one of those keyboard cheat sheets. You've seen them all over the place for like Word and Excel and everything. I've seen a couple for access, but they're kind of, I don't know, they're kind of cheesy. They don't really give you the stuff that like actual people use that use access. They're just, oh, here's a bunch of shortcuts to throw them together. <laughs> so I'm working on one. If you got any suggestions, send them to me. Okay, so that's all the keyboard shortcut stuff and settings and all that. But Rick, you say, you, you told me you were going to show me how to have this open automatically. Well, yes, in order to do this, we need a little teeny tiny bit of VBA coding. Now, don't panic if you've never done any VBA before. It's very simple, visual basic programming. Most things you can do that are super cool, like this stuff, is one line of code. Maybe two. It's just knowing the right spot to put that one line of code in. So I'm going to show you that. If you've never done any VBA coding before, they'll go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches all the basics, everything you need to know to get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into design view here. Now, on each of these guys, we're going to do them one at a time. On each of these guys, go to the event tab, and I want you to find the on got focus event. That fires when this field gets the focus. In other words, when you either tab to it or click on it, right? When, when, when you go to this field, all right, when you enter this field, that's, I don't want to say enter because there's also an on enter event, which is slightly different, but just on got focus is fine. <laughs> All right, when this, when this field gets the focus, this event's going to run. Click on the button, dot, dot, dot. That'll open up your VBA window, your VBA editor. And here I am in the start date got focus event. Okay, right here, I need one line of code. What is that one line of code? This is what you got to know. And it's my job to teach it to you. So you ready? Here we go. One line of code. Do command dot run command, right? They show up in the little pick list. You just got to just, just see it there, hit tab. Space, there's a big long list of all these commands in here. Are you ready? Here, here, here it is. ACCMD show date picker. There it is right there. That's it. In other words, when this text box gets focus, when you tab to it or when you click on it, it's going to run the command show date picker. That's AC command showed up date picker. That's all I got to know. Okay. All right, now I'm going to copy this because we're going to put it in the other field to copy this. Control C. Come back over here. Go to the end date. Click on, on got focus. Dot, dot, dot. And then paste that in there. So you get the same thing in two spots. All right, save it. Control S. Close it. Close it. Reopen it. Ready? I'm just going to click on start date now. Ready? Click. There it is. See? And I'll hit escape so it closes it. And then I'll hit tab. And it popped open the one for end date. See that? As soon as it gets the focus, whether you tab to it or click on it, it gets the little guy up there. See? You can move around with the arrow keys, press enter, and there it is. 
Pretty cool, huh? Now, if for any reason you want to disable this thing, like maybe once you pick the two dates, you want to, I don't know, prevent this thing from showing up. I don't know. For whatever reason, if you want to disable that guy, you can enable it and disable it in code. And you can do that like this. Let's use this hello world button here. All right, we'll call this disable. Disable. All right, right click, build event. I'll get rid of my status command that's in here. Ignore that. And I'll come in here and I'll put in start date dot show date picker equals false. Or you could do true. Okay, save it. Close it. Let's open it back up again. Now look, normally it's got the show date picker. Okay, see that? All right. Now if I hit disable, it just turned it off. All right, so it's not over here. If I click on this now, all right, this commander or action show date picker isn't available. In other words, you can't use it. So if you want to disable it for whatever reason, okay, you'll also have to make sure you come in your code here and turn it off at this level too. All right, you could say something along the lines of if that, then do that. In other words, if the show date picker property is true, it's okay to show it, right? Save it, close it. All right, let's try it again. Click on it, click, there it is. Okay, I'll disable it. And now when I click on it, nothing happens because that code is saying, okay, we're gonna check to see if show date picker, if the property is true. If not, then it just exit out. If it is true, it'll show you the date picker. There's all kinds of stuff you can do in here depending on how you want to uh, have your form operate. I cover lots more cool stuff like this in my Access Developer lessons. I've currently got 40 different levels of Access Developer training for VBA and all kinds of cool stuff. Now, if you want an alternative to the boring date picker that Access has built in, I've created my own. I've got a fully customizable form right here. It's not a separate control. It's, it's all built straight in Access. Right, you can customize the colors. It'll show you the current date. It'll show you the date you've selected. You can go back and forth through the years and stuff and the months. You can call this from any form and return your val value to any form. Okay, so you can use it all throughout your database. Likewise, the same package also includes a time picker. I've got an analog clock here and you can customize the colors. Okay, and I've got some digital time pickers here too. So you can go up and down, like you do military time, you can do all this stuff. This is my access date time picker template. You can find out more information here at this page. I'll put a link down below that you can click on if you want to learn more information. So that has been your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more.
YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.